when learning about sorting, the first sorting algorithm that you learned about is probably insertion sort. The one where for each element, you keep swapping with the previous one until it's not smaller anymore. Then maybe you learned about bubble sort, selection sort, merge sort, and quick sort. And in all these 5 sorting algorithms, we compare elements at some point of the process. They are comparison based sorting algorithms. The question is, can we sort elements without comparing them? The answer is yes, let's see how to do so with this array. First step, let's count the number of occurrences of each value. For that, we create an array whose the last index is the maximum element in R and which hovers the elements while incrementing count of ln. Second step, we calculate the cumulative sum. For each element, we add to it the sum of all the elements before it. To do so, we just add count of i minus 1 to count of i where i goes from 1 to the end of count. And now last step, we create an array that has the same size as r, and for each element in r by starting from the end, we decrement count of lm and we insert it in the sorted array at the index count of lm. And we got our sorted array without comparing any pair of elements. This algorithm is called counting sort. Ok, but why does it work? This is what we're gonna see now. Here we have the occurrences of each element, and we said that to calculate the cumulative sum, we must add to each element the sum of all the elements before it. And in reality, that sum represents the number of elements that are smaller than it. This is why we can't directly know where to put the element in the sorted array. For example, we have 3 occurrences of the number 8. And the sum of elements before the index 8 in count is 5. It means that in the sorted array, we know that we will have 3 occurrences of the number 8 starting from the index 5. 5 because we have 5 elements that are smaller than 8. Before moving to the next point, I want to precise 3 things. The first one is that this implementation doesn't handle negative values, because the count array can't have the index minus 3 for example. And also, it can waste a lot of space, because if for example our values are between 990 and 999, it still needs to create an array of 1000 elements. Remember, we are creating an array of length max plus 1. And here the minimum is 990, so all the part before it won't be used. We created an array of 1000 elements to use only 10 of them. To fix these two problems, we create an array whose number of elements is the length of the range of values in the array, which is max minus min plus 1. If our values are between 990 and 999, we create an array of 999 minus 990 plus 1 elements, which is 10, enough to contain all the possible values. The second point is that, when filling the sorted array, we traverse elements of R backwards, because doing so makes counting sort a stable sorting algorithm. A stable sorting algorithm is a sorting algorithm that keeps the order of elements with similar keys. Here the blue and the red elements have the same key, and blue is before red, it has to also be the case in the sorted array. We traverse backwards so that the last occurrence of a value goes to the index x, then the one before it goes to x-1, then x-2, and so on. And third thing, counting sort is not the only non-comparison based sorting algorithm. We also have radix sort and bucket sort for example. Tell me in comments if you want a video about them. Now we can move to the code. We said that we create an array of max minus min plus 1 elements. So we get the minimum, we get the maximum, and we create an array of max minus min plus 1 elements all initialized to 0. Now we need to count the occurrences of each value in the array. So for each element in R, we increment count of lm minus min. lm minus min because the minimum should be at index 0, its successor of the index 1, and so on. Now that we got the number of occurrences, we need to calculate the cumulative sum. To do so, for each index i starting from 1, we just add count of i minus 1, because count of i minus 1 actually contains the sum of elements from 0 to i minus 1. Last step, we create the sorted array and we start inserting. 
For that, we traverse elements of R backwards while decrementing count of LM minus min, then inserting LM at the index count of LM minus min. And we got our sorted array, we return it. Ok, but what about the time and space complexity of this algorithm? Let's analyze it. For the time complexity, we have three for loops. The first one traverses R to count the number of occurrences, the cost is n, where n is the length of R. The second loop traverses count array to calculate the cumulative sum, the cost is k, where k is the length of count, which is max minus min plus 1. And the third loop traverses R backwards to insert elements in the sorted array, the cost is n, where n is the length of R. The total is 2 times n plus k, which gives the time complexity of O of n plus k by removing the constant. Note that we also have the cost of finding min and max and creating the arrays, but it doesn't affect the time complexity. And for the space complexity, here we are using two extra arrays, count array, whose length is k, the length of the range of values of r, max minus min plus 1, and sorted array, whose length is n, the length of r. The total is n plus k, which gives a space complexity of O of n plus k. And by the way, if you want to learn how to analyze the time and space complexity of an algorithm as I did now, I recently released an amazing course on the subject, the time and space complexity analysis course. You can find the link in the description. The time complexity of counting sort is O of n plus k, which is linear, then why it's not a general purpose sorting algorithm, like quicksort for example. It's true that this algorithm is efficient when n and k are close to each other, but we have cases where k is significantly greater than n, the algorithm would be slow in that case. Suppose that we want to sort 100 elements that are between 1 and 10 thousands, here k is equal to 10 thousands, which is the square of n, the time complexity becomes O of n squared. And things can get even worse, if we have 100 elements between 1 and 1 million, k is 1 million, which is the cube of n, the time complexity becomes O of n cubed, which is very inefficient. Same thing for the space complexity, it also becomes O of n cubed. We did use that counting sort should be used only when k doesn't exceed n much, like when sorting people by age, k probably won't exceed 150 or something. We reached the end of this video, in this one we talked about counting sort, a non-comparison based sorting algorithm, we've seen how it works, its implementation in code, its time and space complexity, and why it's not a general purpose sorting algorithm. I hope that you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next one.